Welcome to another segment of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. Once again, I am Rick George, and this is Palm Beach County Fire Rescue's SCBA Confidence Trailer. Just that word alone will elicit anxiety in a lot of people, and there's several reasons for it. One, it's the senses that it involves. It takes your vision away, you're confined, it gives you a sense of feeling like you're being suffocated. There's uh, uh, the fear of the unknown because you don't want to know what's in there. And then add on top of that the anxiety of being able to perform in front of your peers. And you've got a cocktail for some problems if you don't know how to handle it as an instructor. So without having to go to the extent that some people think that we're coddling them, what we're doing here is that we teach confidence. That's what this trailer is about. It's about teaching confidence. It's about teaching body position, being able to dr to breathe through the body positioning. Some of it's going to be uncomfortable. Uh, the rumination and the self-talk that we spoke about during hypervigilance. These are where the challenges are going to come in because this is where the anxiety and fear is at its greatest. Um, you're going to go through this and as you're going through it, you're going to have to paint a mental image in there. So this is where the mental rehearsals come through. So the visualization and the mental imagery and all of that mental toughness that falls under resiliency is where all of these things come into play. The association is if you find yourself in a hoarder house, these are the circumstances that you're going to find yourself in. There's going to be live fire, you're going to have very little room to move around in, and you're going to be searching. So all of these things come into play in one form or another. I'm just making the association where these things would be appropriately used. We're gonna move forward from here and we're gonna show you independent segments. They're gonna be edited, but there's specific things that we wanna show you in that. It may not seem like much, but trust me, when we put it all together into a realistic training scenario where the anxiety level has been ratcheted up a notch, um, it doesn't take much under a lot of under a lot of circumstances people will ratchet it way up uh, Stephen Kotler is a PhD who wrote a book it's called the rise of Superman and in this book he has documented the research that it only needs a four percent is your variable four percent increase in a degree of difficulty to exceed your ceiling that's where the sympathetic nervous system kicks in. That's where the anxiety starts to occur. That's where the epinephrine, the norepinephrine, and all the cortisol and everything starts to come out. It's where you lose your cognitive ability to be able to get through circumstances and troubleshoot things and rapid pattern recognition. All these things are lost. But here's what you gain if you train like this. Through this series of evolutions that we've shown you in this resiliency packet, you're developing dopamine, you're, you're excreting dopamine, which is the feel-good hormone. On top of that, you've got oxytocin. Oxytocin is the bonding hormone. That's the one that makes you feel like a cohesive unit when you train together. Serotonin, that's the one that makes you feel important. So if like you're the irons guy or the roof guy or the guy that knows how to do search and he's very comfortable in confined spaces and can keep his calm, that sense of importance, that's the oxytocin, or I'm sorry, the serotonin that's being released in your body. And then there's the endorphins. And the endorphins that are released is what keeps you going. It's what gives you that second win. It's what allows you to be there through your brothers and sisters when you're in that hot, confined space and your knees or your hands are burning up and you continue to go. It becomes familiar. So as we do these things a little at a time, constantly increasing the degree of difficulty, those hormones increase. We also increase the rapid pattern recognition and the ability for recognition prime decision making in the learning process so now our ceiling for being that high speed low drag firefighter that we all want to be is actually there but it takes the software and it takes the hardware you got to combine it all with the tactics in order to become uh, the quintessential firefighter so to speak okay to, to be that person that person that you're striving to be in the fire service you're going to have to work and we're going to show you what some of that work looks like now so this is where we start. Our trailer starts at the very top and the student lowers himself down into the trailer. Previously we talked about the dominance of vision and how strong it is. So now the student bumps himself, he can feel he's going into a confined space. The anxiety level is very naturally going to go up. But what are you telling yourself? If you're untrained and undisciplined and you haven't used the mental rehearsals that we have given you and the ability to be able to use imagery by focusing your hands to be able to paint a picture for yourself, the anxiety level can run. Your focus is going to falter. So when we were talking about body position, you can see that Joey right now, he reaches up and he can feel the opening. He uses leverage to be able to pull himself up. 
find the entrance. This doesn't seem like much of a big deal, especially the way that he's pulling himself up, but he's keeping the pressure off of his diaphragm and it's allowing him to breathe without struggling. Now, as the firefighter starts to come through a narrow entrance, he's going to find himself challenged to be able to crawl and not get caught up on anything and breathe at the same time. He decreases his profile by laying to one side. It still keeps his diaphragm to be able to expand completely. During the next obstacle, he's got a decision to make. This is where that mental rehearsal comes through. Notice how he spun around. His body was almost extended when he spun around. This keeps the diaphragm free so that he can breathe, and it also keeps him in control in the position of power. During this drill, ordinarily, these doors would be closed. The reason they would be closed is so that the student wouldn't come off the end, but for the purposes of showing this video, we've opened everything up and blackened the student out. You have two options. You can black the building out, or you can black the student out. Either way, it challenges the sense of vision. So most of the time when students get into a tight area like this, they have a tendency of increasing their respirations. So as the firefighter gets towards the end here, he has a decision to make. And that's one where he can lay flat and try to make the transition, or he can raise his head and keep his feet low, pivoting on his hips while still allowing his diaphragm to expand and get a full breath. This doesn't compromise your ability to breathe. Once you compromise your ability to breathe, that's where the anxiety starts to kick in. Again, the student's making a mental map in his head to be able to get his way through things. He's using his sense of touch to create the map. So today we combined a lot of the things that we talked about in all the other series. What we called uh, the self-talk, the rumination, the breathing, the mental rehearsals. We incorporated all of that and we on top of that we added body mechanics and positioning and combined it with breathing along with removing some of the senses. All of this is that increased degree of difficulty that we discussed about and the stimulation of certain hormones. All of it is about success based training. Learning to put all of this stuff together as an instructor and being able to see what it is that you're looking at is vital for our instructors if we plan on changing the culture of our fire service. The failure based training model doesn't work. The success based training model does work. So I just want to thank you for joining us for another segment of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. My name is Rick George.